I've been training in data science and specifically the R language for almost five years. So I'm super excited to start a playlist that introduces R. I hope it's helpful to you. And I'm going to start by examining the most common data structure that is vectors. Vectors are the powerful and common data structure in R that it, for me at first it was counterintuitive that they are natural or native to R but it turns out to be a very powerful feature of the language. And in this video I will be heavily influenced by Hadley Wickham's book Advanced R. It seems like everybody in the community is heavily influenced by Hadley Wickham, so I'm not unique in that respect. So now let me just take a look at introducing vectors in R. So I'm open in R Studio, the IDE, which makes it super easy to work with R by giving me panels like the environmental variables and the console. And I've started a notebook file in our studio. The notebook file is very cool because it allows me to insert code chunks of R and run that code interactively and see the output. So my outline you can see here starts by showing that vectors come in two different flavors. So in, this, in most realistic cases, this is going to cover 80%, if not all, of the data structures that you'd encounter in an actual assignment. Vectors can be either atomic or list. The nature of an atomic vector is that all of the elements in the vector are of the same type. So R also calls them types modes. So we'll use them as synonyms. We say types or modes. And the most common types or modes are logical, integer, double, and character. So if we have an atomic vector, it's a vector where all of the elements are either logical or integer or double or character, but we're not mixing them. Now, if the vector is not atomic, then it's a list vector, probably. And a list vector means that all of the elements do not need to be the same type, including the list vector can include other lists as part of its elements. So it has a recursive nature. The most common structure of all in R is the data frame because it's rectangular and that's oftentimes how we import or read data into R as a rectangular data form, data frame, excuse me. And you might be surprised to learn that the data frame is strictly speaking a list in R. It's just a list of equal length vectors, but where each of the vectors in that list do not necessarily need to be of the same type. We can have a logical vector and an integer vector and a character vector all next to each other as different columns in the data frame, but they will be of equal length. So vectors are either atomic or list. And I thought it'd be, I thought a, a good easy way to start is with a variable called three dice, which we assign. That's our assignment operator. In lieu of an equal sign, we assign to the variable three dice, and I'm just going to assume that we've ro uh, rolled a six-sided die three times, or three dice, and um, I'm not even going to randomize them. I'm just going to say that, let's say our, our outcomes were two, three, and six. We rolled the three dice, and that's what we get. We store it in the variable three dice. You notice that's reflected in my environmental values up here, and I have just created a vector and if I wanted to check or just print it out, I could say three, three dice, have R return that to me interactively. And I get back a vector. This initial one is telling me, okay, I'm starting with the first element in your vector because oftentimes we get multiple lines. And so this is a label telling us what element we're, we're starting with here. The first element in our vector is two and then three and then six. Well, I just gave it that. If I wanted to check the, for what type my vector is, I could use the command type, type of, in this case, three dice. And you can see uh, R comes back and tells me, actually comes back with a vector and uh, telling me that the type is double. So you notice that it just figured that this out. Sometimes we use uh, double as, as uh, we, we can call that numeric as well, although strictly speaking, numeric, I think, is both integer, is either integer or double. But in any case, uh, this vector is uh, double. R figured that out for us. And I could also ask the length of that vector with the length command. And what I'm getting back there 
is a vector of length 1 with where that first down only element is 3. Write the answer to my question. What's the length? The length of my vector 3 dice is 3. 1, 2, 3 elements in the vector. But just to note, what we got back is actually a vector of length 1. And if I want, I can take my three dice as, a, uh, as my variable and subset or retrieve the second element in that vector. I use square brackets. So in this case, I'm asking for R to return for me the second element in that vector. I hit return, and you notice I get back the three. An extremely common command that I use almost every time I'm working with R is str, uh, short for structure, and because it gives us the structure of an object. If we just didn't, if we had no idea what three dice is, str returns for us, tells us that I have here a numeric vector of length three, and then it'll even give me the first few elements. In this case, that happens to be all I need. Okay, so now I'm just going to do three more and create another atomic vector. And I'm just going to assume we rolled three more dice and let's just uh, make up numbers for that. And you can see uh, Studio helpfully here in the environment. And in this panel here with the environment tells me what's stored in memory. I've, I've created another uh, variable here so that... Now we sort of get to the um, natural or native vectorization. If I take three dice, that first variable, which is a vector, and add three more, right? I'm just going to add the two together. And you might think about what we would expect to happen here. It may not be obvious, not necessarily obvious to me. But if I add them together, add these two uh, numeric vectors together, you'll notice what I get back here is a vector of length 3. And what R has done is it's added the first elements together, the second elements together, and the third elements together. So my 2 plus 1 is 3, my 3 plus 5 is 8, and my 6 plus 2 is 8. You might have noticed that R just assumed my 3 dice um, was a numeric vector, but I could have um, insisted, for example, if I go back to three dice, I could have insisted that they were integers by using an L here. So say three, two L, three L, and six L, and then check the structure of that. And so I'm storing the same integer values, but you can see formally R now knows that this is this is still an atomic vector, but in this case, it's it includes elements of type integer. So what if I say one die and I just assign that a single value of four? I can do that of course. You can see reflected in my environment. And now going back to the native um, native vectorization of R, if I check the structure of that well, it's going to give me the one, it's going to tell me uh, that it's a numeric vector and the first element is four. But what we have there is a scalar. So a scalar is a vector of only length one. And then we might uh, say, let's add the three dice to the one die. And here again, you might wonder what kind of result would we expect? I don't think this is obvious at all what to expect. And what we get back is a vector of length 3 with elements 6, 7, and 10. What did R do? Well, my three dice, you can see my three dice, I'll just re rerun it, was 2, 3, and 6. And then I got 6, 7, 10. What uh, R did is recycles. It takes the 2, in three, this first element of two and adds the four, that's a six. And then it goes to the second element of three, looks for the second element in one die, but there is none. The length of one die is only one. And so it recycles the four. Three plus four is seven. And for the third element of six, it looks for an element here 
uh, doesn't find one, recycles the four. So when vectors are added together, the shorter vector, its elements are recycled. You can see here, six plus four is 10. Let's see, the one common atomic type I haven't used yet, if I go back up here to my types, logical integer double character. If you're wondering about date, well, date just builds on the double type. Okay, but if I go back to one die here and I assign to it, let's just say the word for, then um, that's sometimes called a string in other languages. Um, I have now created a atomic vector of length one where the type is character. And I can do two dice and I, I would combine in the same way there. So maybe maybe we, we wanna we wanna store a two and a four into two dice. And then if I check the structure of that, two dice here, you see it's telling me that I have an atomic vector, type or a character vector, length of two, and here are the first two elements. If I if I haven't already used the length command, right, I've got that available to me, length of two dice. Uh, the length of that vector is two. And so one of the things I haven't done here is, well, I have retrieved and I could retrieve with the two dice. I can do that similarly here. If I want the second element of two dice, um, I do that same with the second brackets as a way of subsetting, um, requesting the second element from that vector. Okay. Um, so what I meant is that the the one the attribute type I haven't done is the logical, sometimes called Boolean. And so let's just say I want to store the results of a coin. Booleans are uh, true, false. So, and there's a reserve keyword. You can see it going blue for me. And I'm just going to pretend that a false is like a tails and a true is like a head. So maybe we had a tails, tails, head, tails. And so you can see right here, I'm creating the variable coin and I'm storing it as a vector, atomic vector of length four with a type or mode of logical, AKA Boolean. And if I wanna check that with strength, right? Uh, structure, not strength. I get that back. Uh, you can see here, logical vector, length of four. And here are the first few elements of that vector. What's really helpful with the logical, and it goes to the, the next and last subject that I'm gonna cover, or, or, or the, the next to last subject, which is coercion, is that those logicals are coerced for us into integers. And but what I mean by that is, I can go ahead and take the sum of coin, and, and I'm just gonna use um, a semicolon here to separate two different uh, commands at the same time, and the mean of coin, so you see here, I'm now uh, operating on, I'm uh, taking the summation here of the vector straight away, right? Natural vectorization. This is one of the, this is the thing that wasn't intuitive to me when I first was learning R, but now I'm just gonna operate a straight summation on coin, which is a Boolean, but the, uh, the logical, and the logical is coercing into integers. In other words, uh, R is treating a false as zero and a true as one. I think some other languages do that as well. And so this turned out to be very handy. You can see here in summing coin, I'm getting really the number of trues, which is one. And for the mean of coin, I'm getting the mean of a, of a vector that essentially create contains zero, zero, one, zero. So very handy, comes in very handy in practice. So then uh, I just, uh, last two topic, uh, covering vector here, last um, two, th two items uh, is coercion. So coercion refers to the fact, uh, the way that I interpret it is that when you go to create a vector, R isn't gonna break on you just because you mixed some elements and you didn't mean to create a list. What it does is it coerces and the rule that it uses is least to most flexible. And it's the same sequence that I listed them at the top. Least flexible is logical, most flexible is character. So um, for example here, if I go back to create my coin, that was my original um, command there, you can see up here um, that's, I, I've been, I've. That's strictly well-behaved. I've created a, 
a logical vector length four that contains all of the each of the elements are of the same type. They are logical or Boolean. And I won't do that mean right now. But let's just say I did coin um, where I mixed them up. False uh, one, true zero. And now I'm just going to enter that command there. And now I'll check the structure of that coin. And, you know, may or may not be intuitive, but the structure of that is numeric, right? So least to most flexible. We, we mixed a logical with an integer, or actually I didn't specify integer. I used a, um, I used a double implicitly, but we'll just, we'll just treat integer and double as both numeric, which they are. So I have a logical and a numeric and a logical and a numeric. I mixed them or didn't break on me. What it did is it treated the, it coerced the logicals into their equivalent um, numerics, right? So we get back a numeric vector. And so just to take that one step further, what if I really mix them, have a logical, a numeric, and then I put in two characters. I'm still creating a vector of length four. R doesn't break on me. It coerces. And it coerces everything to the most flexible here, which is character. And in practice, that's oftentimes what ends up happening. So I do strength, uh, structure of coin. Don't know why I keep saying strength. And you can see here in my console, it's telling me, okay, that coin is a character vector of length four. Here are the first four elements. And notice I'm getting those quotes to remind me that these that this is a character vector. And then these elements in this character vector are characters. And I can still go and retrieve. Let's say I want the third element in that vector coin three, and it turns out to be heads. Finally, there are functions that test um, for each of these, right? And that's is.numeric. So if I do is numeric on the coin, you'll notice I get back a false. And now at this point, probably in a good position to appreciate the fact that what are we getting back here? Well, I'm just gonna actually check the structure of that result. I'm getting back a logical vector of length one where the first and only element is false. So just wanted to really highlight how we're always really in a vector land, which turned out to be really cool. And then I can go is character on the coin. I get true because that was the last, that is how I left it. And I can go back to that is numeric on three dice, test for that. And yes, it's true um, as numeric. Okay, so that's an introduction to the inherently vector nature of R. So I hope that was helpful and hope you like, like it as much as I did or do.